Oh, there she is now. Looking good too. On this episode... I'd call that poking her tongue out, Chris. <laughs> The issue is those front legs, the arthritis is still making her quite stiff and uncomfortable. She may, in the future, just not be able to walk at all. I've got to catch her, yet yeah, it's easier said than done. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. What the hell is this guy doing now? But first... Elroy! He kind of walks around, he thinks he owns the place. It looks like we got the most energetic British bulldog in the world. I mean, I'm not even encouraging this, but he's I just know. all over me. What we need to do is, is settling down. We've just got to get rid of those. We replace them with silicon balls. No. <laughs> they do look smaller than yeah, his, they're, though. They're slightly compressed because they've been in air freight. Come here. No. All right, come here. No, Elroy. Sorry, I know you probably want to eat your food in peace, but he's not very good, sorry. Elroy is only 10 months and he's gorgeous, but he's getting out of hand now that he's getting a lot bigger. Sorry. <laughs> I bought his breed thinking that, you know, he was a lazy sod, but it looks like we got the most energetic British bulldog in the world. Come on. Because he's getting bigger, he's so much harder for me to control. He's so strong and if he's on the lead, he pulls me. Like, he's walking me, I'm not walking him. You know, now it's got out of hand and he's just annoying, really. Elroy! Sorry, he's so annoying. Oh, Elroy, you're not allowed to do that. I want to get him under control because it's embarrassing to take him for a walk and let him off the leash and I don't want people to feel uncomfortable to stop and talk to me. He's a nuisance, sorry. He would not hurt a fly. I've never once in 10 months owning him encountered him being aggressive with a human or another dog. Come on! Elroy, come! He kind of walks around and he struts his stuff. He thinks he owns the place most of the time and, and he kind of does. <laughs> Me and my partner definitely do um, feel differently about um, Elroy and his, um, his masculinity. I would like to have him desexed. He doesn't want him desexed. I think it's his pride being damaged as well, really. He likes the look of Elroy being this big, strong, tough guy with rather large testicles. <laughs> and I think, you know, he might have what he doesn't. <laughs> I am extremely keen to calm him down and get on top of this. I'm hoping that, you know, Chris might be able to help me. Oh, the face of the Good. You too. Yeah, it's good to see you too. He's being a nightmare again. Yeah? Yes. So he's getting worse or is he still doing all the bad things he's been doing? Yeah, he's still doing it. Running on people and jumping on people and yeah. being his normal old self, really. Yeah. I know how much you love him and I know you want to do everything you can for him, but this is just too much, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm not even encouraging this, but he's I just know. all over me. Yeah, he's still gorgeous, but it's harder now because he's so much bigger and stronger. When he was a puppy, he was cute, and, and but everything was done in a puppy way. It was gentle, but now he's big and he's boisterous, mm. and he, in you know, in the nicest possible way, he's, he's beastly. You know, he, he knocks you, almost knocks you over when, yeah. when he comes up to to give you some love. What we need to do is, is settle him down, is really calm him down, and just lower that excitability, lower that boisterousness that he has. Mm, how? <laughs> the first That's step. That's what I want to know. <laughs> but the simplest and most logical step is the fact we've just got to get rid of those. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm all for that, but um, it's just convincing someone else in my household that it is the logical way. Yeah. So. And so your boyfriend's a little bit against it, as a lot of men often are? Yeah, I think he likes how manly he looks. He's not going to calm down while they're there, and that's, mm. that's the unfortunate thing. But in terms of your boyfriend's wishes, in terms of maintaining his manhood and making him look masculine, there is an option. Yes. Tell me more. There's, I need to know. There's an alternative. Yeah. A few years ago, a very inventive guy actually invented something called neutricles. They're essentially replacement testicles. So we castrate him and we remove that testosterone, mm. but we replace them with silicon balls. 
No. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. So, Who thinks of these things? Uh, funnily enough, Americans. <laughs> oh my so god. So they come from America, and it's yeah. a really simple procedure. We we just castrate him, we replace them with these silicon testicles. He wakes up from the anaesthetic, not knowing anything different. He's still got little balls there, yeah. or in his case, big balls there, and he looks the same dog but he won't act the same dog. He'll be a lot calmer. Yeah. And given a few weeks once, once those hormones leave his system, yeah. this whole boisterousness, this whole over-the-top attitude that he's got will calm right down. So it'll actually take his behaviour to a better level. Mm -hmm. So instead of racing up to people and grabbing the hold of them and, and wanting to be their best friend, whether they like it or not, he's then going to be the dog that just takes it easy, goes up to them and says, hi, how you going? I'm Elroy. You might like to meet me. I'm a good-looking kid. I'm from Bondi. And, and just take it easy that way. Yeah. So we haven't really got any other option apart from castration, but I guess we can sweeten the deal a bit by having these replacements, these silicon uticles. So maybe that might help convince your boyfriend. I think it's going to be a good alternative, but I don't think I can keep listening to both the men in the house. I've got to take charge, you know. CTA uticles. Hi there, it's, uh, it's Chris Brown here. I'm a vet from Australia. Hi, Dr. Brown. How are you, sir? Oh, not, not too bad at all. Now, you're the man to talk to if we're looking for, uh, for silicon testicle implants for dogs. Yes, sir. This is Nudicle Central. I've got a dog in mind that I think it'd be perfect for the, the, uh, the implants. He's a, he's a bulldog. His name's Elroy. How do I go about you know, working out what size he requires? Well, we need his age and weight. He's nine months old and weighs 21 kilos. Normally bulldogs are, are well endowed compared to other dogs of similar weight. And I can assure you he, he fits that mold perfectly. He's, um, he's a big boy, so to speak. The owner's boyfriend is very concerned about making sure that his true size is preserved. Now, I risk death, basically, if, uh, if I put in a set smaller than they actually are. Can, can you... Can you reassure me that uh, that we're going to get the size we right here? We have 11 different sizes. They come in literally quarter-inch increments. So, I mean, we can get it down to a gnat's knee, I'm telling you. <laughs> now, tell me, is there more than one, I guess, model of Nudicle? Can you... We have actually four different models. He can literally be restored to anatomical preciseness. So it's it's the full package, so to speak, Greg? It's a, it's a work of art, I'm telling you. You know, when he wakes up, he won't know anything's missing and everything will stay the same. So if, if Elroy's 21 kilos, which is 46 pounds, and we're looking, what would that make us? He would definitely be our medium size. Okay, all right, that's fine. Greg, look, what we're looking at, I think we'll go for the Ultra in the medium size for Elroy. We can get that order out today. Orders placed today, go out today. Okay, cheers, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bye. mate. Bye. I guess I'm reassured by the fact that he's got the sizing right, he's got so many different models that we can absolutely tailor what he has to what Elroy has or is soon not to have. So, oh, it's just one of those conversations I never really thought I'd ever have in my life, sitting there talking about silicon testicles. How you going? Hi, I've got a package for Chris. That is oh, me. There you yeah. go. Thanks, mate. Cheers, bye bye. Oh, I just can't believe they're finally here. This is hilarious. They were opened for inspection by quarantine. I can't um, really blame them. I think that'd be quite a strange package to have come through International Post. My biggest concern is they're just not big enough because our boy, he's a Big boy. So here they are. Elroy's nudicles. Individually wrapped, which is nice. So we can't actually open them because they're sterile. So they have to go from this packaging straight into Elroy. They have a standard size for a dog his age and his weight. I think that feels about right. I know there's concerns in the, uh, in the Brie camp that we're gonna downsize him, but I can assure her that what goes in will be what came back out. So Elroy's big day. Well, it isn't too far away. And this looks like the Nudicles instruction manual. This is so bizarre. I've castrated thousands of dogs, but this is, all, it's almost like Ikea. They, they give you numbers to follow to make sure you get the implant in the right way. I just hope it's not like Ikea where they sometimes forget just one crucial part. So strange. Good 
boy, oh boy. Very big day for Elroy and I. I'm actually really excited about it because I feel like it will be just so much relief at home and on our walks and I'm hoping it will make a difference, yeah. I can hear him coming. Hi, Hello. Good How are you? you? I'm good. Yes. Hello. How are you? It's his big day. It is. It is. In more ways than one, huh? <laughs> and generous. I'm very excited. Well, so you should be. And how's he been? Yeah, he's been pretty bad. So <laughs> just really eager to get this done. There's absolutely no question yep. in getting it done in yep. the end. So it was kind of me taking control and went, yep, getting into <laughs> sex. You just laid down the wall. And yeah, well, he kind of said, okay, well, as long as he gets his plastic surgery. <laughs> so it wasn't hard convincing your boyfriend that, that silicon was the way to go? I think every man likes silicon anyway, but <laughs> he loves his personality, but he does realise that he's out of control. Yeah. So it's definitely time to, to do something about it, isn't it, mister? You are a wild child, aren't you? These have travelled 16,000 kilometres oh. to be here, and they're now about 16 centimetres away from where they're going to end up. <laughs> So, these are them. So, oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, 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 ridiculous. They're kind of, I don't know. Don't say small. Don't, just don't say too small. They do look smaller than yeah, yours they're, they're slightly compressed because they've been in air freight. Okay, cool. I think. So they will expand. Yeah. Yeah. Once they're in. Okay, good. And you've got to realise that the ones he's already got are already wrapped in skin and, and other things. So yeah. I was worried you were gonna to say to look small. <laughs> do you realize the do. pressure I'm feeling to make sure that these match up? Yeah, I know. They're kind of But look, if you just just I don't like to do this, but if you compare there. Yeah. Once they've got skin around them. We're, talking, we're in the same ballpark. The thing is, if I put in something, in something that's bigger, it ain't gonna go in. I know. Okay. Look, I think you will, you will be happy when you see okay. the results. Do you think your boyfriend's gonna be happy with the size? <laughs> um, yeah, look, I think he'll be happy with the size once they're in and they've got a bit of swelling to them. <laughs> <laughs> and skin surrounding them, yeah. so. Yeah. It should be fine. I mean, look, I spent a lot of time and, and made a lot of calls, international I calls, know. to make sure that these sizes matched up. You're a good man. Okay, I stand by my results. Excellent. I'm looking forward to seeing them. <laughs> Do you want to say a little goodbye to me? Yeah. We'll see you later on today. Bye, your boy. Bye. See ya. All right, all right. We've got everything sorted now. Come on now. Come on. So just have a listen to his heart, make sure it's all, all sounding okay. Any dog with a flat nose is a real, I wouldn't say nightmare, but a real challenge to anaesthetise. Come on, Ellery. Good boy. I guess the thing is that even though it's, it's a slightly comical operation, there's a very serious side to it because he's, he's going to be very tricky to, to get under anaesthetic and then keep her under right. anaesthetic and then also recover from anaesthetic because this area through here just doesn't breathe very well. So once that tube comes out, we have to be very careful to watch how he breathes. Okay, that all sounds fine. I just don't really want to give him too many sedations to settle him down because it's actually going to make the anaesthetic a little bit more dangerous for him. Good boy, all right? Good dog. Good man. Good boy. And before you go off to sleep, just let me tell you this. We're actually about to castrate you. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I hadn't told you until now and it's cruel to tell you this late, but it's true. You're getting big ones in replacements though. So this is the basic plan of what we're trying to do today. So he's got his two little balls there, or large ones. What we do is we actually make a cut about there, around there. We then push these two out, tie them off, pull them out, and then these guys come in and get basically put in the same hole that they come out of, and hopefully they should sit pretty much the same way. So the way they go out is the way they go in through a very small little slit. Pretty simple, or so it seems. Dogs will typically lose heat during anaesthetic. I just want to make sure it's not, not too much. So 
we've got our first testy there. Now, this is where our normal operation that we normally do is different because normally I'm just taking it out, but now I've got to be pretty conscious of actually getting it out and leaving enough room to get it back in as well. So first things first, let's castrate it. That's one out there. All right, Mel, can you get me the first? The first of the nudical thing? Yes, with pleasure. <laughs> It is a very strange feeling. It does almost feel a little bit, a little bit liquid, but I guess that's what it's all about. It's got to feel quite lifelike. So, if any wives are sitting at home looking at this, thinking that maybe their husband could go through a similar thing, think again. It's not that easily done. Thank you very much. Now, this is the hard thing because the way you put them in is the way they're going to sit. And they've got to sit like that, with the curved edge down, as opposed to upside down. That would be very hard to explain if I were upside down. Yeah. So. You can sympathise with plastic surgeons. <laughs> it's certainly more difficult than you might think. I mean, I think I said it before, it's just a, it's a simple matter of pulling one out and putting it straight back into the place it came from, but it's tricky and certainly by keeping Bree's boyfriend's wishes of, of making sure that the sides matched up, we probably almost overestimated his size. Once you take that testy out, the space that it came from really just disappears. So you've almost got to recreate that cavity and, and then squeeze this very soft and, and jelly-like lump of silicon into place. And it's proving quite a challenge to get this one in. So now we've got the nudicle in place, we're just going to stitch it closed. It's just so tricky though, because everything's so slippery and it's made the surgery actually very, very difficult. Sizing's pretty good there. You couldn't really tell which is the fake one, which is the real one. And as they say, if you can't tell the difference, that's what it's all about. So we've got one done, and now it's on to the second one. Now with the benefit of experience, I'm now a qualified silicon surgeon, this one should hopefully be a little bit easier. The tricky thing now is actually just getting the, the orientation of it right because you don't want the, sounds a little strange, but the curved side up. You want a nice little gentle curve at the bottom of Elroy's bits. There we go. That's good. These ones are uh, a second to none. They're the top of the range testicles and I don't think Brie would have it any other way. I would say that Elroy is actually going to be the first in Bondi to have these. Yeah. Not often you can claim to be the first to do anything in Bondi, so Elroy should parade these with pride. So this is the final magical part where we're going to push the last one into place and I'm just going to make it sure it sits in the right spot there. Once we've done these stitches then we'll let uh, Elroy wake up and from there then he's going to wake up to find something has changed but in a way something stayed the same as well. Oh, it's so heavy. Oh, no, right. oh. Coming around from the surgery pretty well. He's still a little bit groggy, but that's to be expected. And probably the next few hours he'll, he'll wake up gradually and, and be in a, a little bit of discomfort. Obviously we have performed a fairly major operation on him. But he's on some good anti-inflammatory medication, also antibiotics, so that should make the next, um, next few hours a lot more comfortable for him. Go on. Come on. There you go. Look who's here. <laughs> he's in about first year compared to fifth year normally, but he's... Hello. He's going well. Very, very gross. He's very this is not Elroy. Oh no, it's. It's Elroy. Part of it's Should certainly he? not Elroy. But <laughs> he's going to have a little bit of swelling, but just because of the yeah. fact he has been castrated as well. Mm -hmm. 
There you can see it's pretty simple. We just make a little cut here, yep. just there. And then the old ones are taken out. Yep. And the new ones go in the same little hole there. Yeah, right. In the long term, you won't be able to tell the difference. Oh my god, I can't believe how still he's been. Different dog, isn't it? I have never seen him this have still. Seen... What have you done? <laughs> you, can't, you can't sit down properly. Poor little thing. I've never seen him this still before. No. Not even when he was a puppy, huh? Do you think when you get home, your boyfriend could actually tell the difference? Obviously, you know that's being done, but do you think do you think he's going to be happy with how it looks? Um, yeah, I think so. I can't even tell. So, so I hope size. that he can. We talk about size. Is, size is, size is perfect. Okay? Size is perfect. Well done, Chris. Thanks. You did a good job. Right. Yeah. And look, the most important thing is that from now on, we should see a very slow and gradual improvement in his behaviour, and that, that's the most important thing. Yeah. He'll be fine. He's through the worst of it now. Thank you, Chris. Awesome. He's a you bit take happy. him home. Let him sleep. Oh no. I can't wait to home. get him home. Oh! I can't wait oh, to stop. Oh, he's still, he's still <sighs> I'm just going to be go. happy not to make any testicle jokes for at least a few weeks. <laughs> I'm pretty much done my quota for a couple of years, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. You're quite the comedian the last couple of weeks, Chris. Something I've never known you're about actually, you. You're actually way too kind there. Bye, right, Brenda. No See worries. Ya. See you later. Come on, mate. See you, mate. Come on. Good boy. Come on. Come on, Melroy. He's been amazing. Like, I honestly can't believe it. He's definitely learnt to um, obey my rules a little more, which is really good. I'm really happy because I can take him everywhere now with me. That's how much of a difference he is. I mean, he's still very playful and he still loves people, but I guess he's just more chilled. So as time goes on, you know, I'm, there'll definitely be more change and he'll start to obey more. Good boy, oh boy. It's fair to say it's probably the most exclusive residence you'd like to do a house call to. It's very flash. She's looking forward to your visit, I'm sure. Sorry, Always loves flush. a cuddle get, from Chris. I always get nervous when I see my uh, <laughs> special lady. Yes. Well, there she is now. Looking good too. How do I look? Am I okay? <laughs> I'm sure she'll be impressed. Oh, she's, she's still ready. got it. She's ready. What a lady. Lady's been here with us at Vaucluse for a long time. The head gardener remembers when Lady arrived and he's now in his 18th year of service, so we think that Lady must be the second longest serving employee of, of Vaucluse House. How's she been lately? Oh, she's still a little stiff, Chris, but, um, you know, we were hoping you could just check her over and reassure us that, you know, it's all, all normal for a girl of her age. Mm. She looks like a few ladies I've seen after, you know, a big day at the races when they're a bit sore in the feet. She's, <laughs> she's got the splayed legs there. Yeah, they do bow out a fair bit, don't yeah. they? But yeah. um, she gets around all right when, when she needs to. Mm. You can actually see how front hooves are bent over, which makes her walk like a muscle man or I guess a, a muscle lady. Now, the issue with that is that she's actually going to start wearing down just one side of the joint and eventually arthritis is going to take hold and she may, in the future, just not be able to walk at all. Now, Naomi, is that a smile of excitement that she's seeing a favourite man, do you think? Or? I'd call that poking her tongue out, Chris. <laughs> just delighted. <laughs> I think she's being cheeky. Let's try and catch her and see how she. All right, let's give it a close. shot. This is always tricky, isn't it? Isn't it? Well. Now every time I come and see Lady, it's always the same old game. I've got to catch her. Yet yeah, it's easier said than done. Shown up by a 19-year-old goat. That's a bit embarrassing. Come on. In some ways, I feel sorry for her. She's this old goat, and there's, she's got this big vet chasing around a paddock. But you look at her face, and I assure you, half the time she's laughing at me. Okay, you want pace? I'm gonna give you pace. Oh, I seriously reckon I've used up some of my best ever rugby tackles on the old girl. There we go. I might just get my breath back. Oh, school. There's love there. 
I just think it's incredible how old Lady is. Goats in the wild would only live to around seven years of age, whereas Lady's 18 or even 19. She's got to be some sort of record breaker. Oldest goat in Australia, oldest goat in the world, who knows, but she is incredible. Okay. Let's bring her over here. And what we'll do is we'll just put her on a side here. Now, she's an old girl, so I don't want to do it too rough, but um, there we go. If you can just get you to hold those bottom legs there. Yeah, like this. Yep. Okay. Oh, she's pretty relaxed. She is. She likes you. <laughs> Maybe not quite as much as she did before after that. <laughs> Let's have a look, girl. Gee, she's got a, it's a beautiful smile, isn't it? <laughs> She's now 18. It's, it's great she's actually still got her teeth, because a lot of them wouldn't even have teeth left. And her eyes are nice and clear, so yeah, she's got eyes. full sight. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, she's doing OK. Her eyes are clear, her teeth are pretty good, and those horns, yeah, they're still beautiful and sharp. Just the issue is those front legs. The arthritis is still making her quite stiff and uncomfortable. So what have you noticed? You've noticed, noticed she's, she's limping? Well, just that she, you know, seems to really take her time getting up from the ground. It seems that she's quite stiff when she stands up from a sitting position. And then, you know, the first few steps she takes, she'll, she'll limp a little yeah. before she kind of gets going. Yeah, yeah. The first thing you can see is the hooves have really bent over. Sure. Now, the hooves are always going to grow, and what they normally do is grow straight down. Right. But because of her posture, the, the weight's actually not going through the, the hoof evenly, and so it's pushing the, the hoof growth off to one side. Now that's a problem because when they are bent over like that, the weight doesn't go through this joint, this joint or this joint evenly. It's pushed off to one side. And as she gets older, things like arthritis can really become an issue. And if she's putting all her weight through just one side of the joint, then that's going to be a big, a big issue for her. Oh dear lady. We'll just have a feel of a, each of her joints here. That joint there is really stiff. There doesn't seem much movement. There's just almost none at all. I mean, you can maybe, yeah, see the difference there? See that one there? There's a lot of movement there. Then you go to this one, right. and that's it. Yeah. Just years and years of, I guess, being a goat. Um, it, it's nothing that, that could really have been prevented. It's just the fact she is actually living so long yeah. that her joints are getting, getting a little bit worn out. So the cartilage has, has been worn down as a result. Extra bones produced, the joint becomes a bit fibrosed, uh, a, bit, um, yeah. a bit seized up. So, look, hopefully we can help that out today. What I might do is actually do something that we normally do on horses. OK. She doesn't look like a horse, I know, but it's actually a nerve block. So I'm going to inject some local anaesthetic down the back of this leg here. What it's actually going to do is, is absorb into the nerves and block out any pain, any discomfort, coming from the bottom part of these legs here. If you can eliminate any paint coming from down here, then how she walks is how she'll walk if we can eliminate all the paint from that leg. Oh, fabulous, uh, okay. If you can just hold her there, just keep yeah. hold of those bottom, bottom legs there. So I'm now gonna use a nerve blocker, which is something we normally use on horses. The idea here is just to numb out one particular area of her leg. If then she walks normally, then that's where the pain's been coming from, and that confirms our diagnosis that arthritis has been the cause all along. All right, so all I need to do is just give her a little bit of a, of a shave down the sides here. On both legs. Now, what we do is we get some local anaesthetic just draw up a few mils of that. Let's clean up the skin here. Get rid of any bugs. We inject the local anaesthetic right next to the nerve. Okay. And the nerve for the, the hoof here runs, there are two of them, they run down either side of the back of the, the leg there. Oh, she's and a good jump. girl. I just inject a lough anaesthetic around the back of that, and then on the other side. What we'll do, we'll just give that a chance to, to sink in and, and soak in around the nerve there. Yeah. Once that does, then obviously we're going to block out any of the messages the nerve to the bottom of the foot here is going to, going to send around. It's almost falling asleep. All right, so she can stand up. Can you can get up, get up girl. Now. Up you get. Do you want to get up or? No, she says keep massaging. Come on, up you get. There we go. So it'll just take a little while. And how's my girl going? 
Mercedes has settled right in. She's um, been making friends with the ducks. There's actually an added bonus when I come to see Lady. One of my former pets actually lives here. Mercedes the chicken. The other chickens weren't as welcoming, but the ducks certainly seemed to have accepted her. Had nothing to do with the way I brought her up, the fact she thinks she's a duck, Naomi. <laughs> Mercedes actually lived with me in my last house in Bondi, which had this big backyard. She used to lay so many eggs, but when I moved, I had to find a new home for her, and I thought Voikler's house would be perfect. Now, Naomi, you've got to ask, what has happened to my chicken? Oh, she's grown up a lot, hasn't she's, she? She hasn't grown up. She thinks she's a duck. <laughs> I still think she actually feels bad about the fact I'd left her when I moved out. I had no choice. <laughs> Way to greet your father. Huh? He's no spring chicken. <laughs> no spring chicken, another old girl. <laughs> He's got a good party trick though, hang on. <laughs> we'll put her over in the shade here. The ducks see this, they might never accept <laughs> her in again, but have you ever seen a chicken hypnotise? I've heard that you can do it. Yeah. So what you do is you lie them, you lie them flat. You tuck their head in and you stroke them down the middle. So this obviously isn't distressing her? No, I can feel her heart's very relaxed. <laughs> they can pick up when people are being cynical or in any way sceptical <laughs> as well, so that never works. You have when to have faith in this do. party trick. You, do. you can do this to any chicken. Yep. And you go slower, and slower, and slower. She's now just dreaming of those beautiful times we used to spend together, reminiscing. Will she stay like that? Long enough. And that's a hypnotised chicken. Yep. Hypnotising chooks is a real art form. They might look as though they fight it a little bit at the start, but eventually they enjoy it. They go into this deep state of relaxation. And I've got to say, Mercedes is one of my best subjects. Mercedes, you making a goose yourself? Get up. That's raised the um, curiosity of those ducks. They've never seen that before. <laughs> Oh, look at that running. See, she's going okay though. I think she's definitely moving more freely. I'd have to agree. Which way are you going to go? Oh, God. Naomi, you've learnt. Look at that. <laughs> I used to just go for the horns. I've now realised it's more of a <laughs> matter of body weight. There's isn't no it? point being gentle around here. Okay. You got her? Yeah, I've got her. So I'll walk her over here. <laughs> Come on, let me get. There you go. Walk with me. So that was pretty important to see because what it showed us is the fact that certainly she walks a bit more freely when the pain's taken away. So that indicates she's most likely got arthritis there. Yeah. But you see, she still has that difficulty walking because her hooves are off balance. Mm. They're, they're really angled in. So, desperate times. Can we times. trim them or something? Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. And you might be a bit surprised by this, but we're actually going to call in the heavy artillery. What do you mean? You'll see. You just come with me. Come on. Oh, OK. The other plan of attack is something, well, a little left field. If she's a lady, she'll love this. OK. You ready, girl? Big surprise coming. Yeah, I don't think she loves the power tool idea. You can almost see her face, she's looking at you going, what the hell is this guy doing now? But it will help, it's gonna even off those hooves and make sure she walks nice and upright and distributes her weight evenly. All right, so we're probably about halfway there on this foot. It just takes, it takes so long, but what we're, trying to get it it's about five millimetres off, off the side there, just to try and straighten up the foot. Now, I should say, and probably should have said this before, but it's the first gut I've done this on. Oh, you're experimenting on a lady. wouldn't dare experiment on lady, but we do this quite often on cows. OK. And, and occasionally on horses, they put up with the noise, but um, we could say it's an Australian first on a goat. <laughs> How about that? All right, there you go. So she's got her nice new shoes there. So instead of having her 
big masculine arms that she had before. She's going to have nice, long, lady-like legs. So that's done half the job, but the second part is we need to actually sort out that arthritis. See, the arthritis is what's causing the pain. Yeah. You can have a look through all sorts of vet text mooks on goats, and they never mention arthritis. So we've had to be a little bit inventive. And the way we've done that is by using a dog arthritis medication. <laughs> oh dear, a dog. So we're calling our lady a dog just for the moment. This is very safe to use in goats. Okay. So we're actually going to give her three tablets each day. Yep. And that's just going to take the inflammation out of her joints. And now she's walking on the new shoes, she's going to be a lot happier. I see a big improvement. Now Naomi, I guess we've got our tablets, but how do we get the tablets? into lady. I, I usually use something like molasses and ground the tablets up. Well, she's never been a big fan of molasses, Chris. No sweet tooth? No, she she doesn't seem to like it. You like? You reckon she likes beans though? Beans are her favourite. We pick okay. them for her often from the garden. Yes, yes, you just dote on her, don't you? <laughs> we try to. No wonder she doesn't let me tackle it. It's got that okay, ego this is going a on. huge one you okay. can... So you're going to snap it? Yeah. Pop it out. Woohoo! Good with this. <laughs> and just pop it in there, I reckon. I oh, believe me, she'll just wolf that down. It's just like edamame. <laughs> okay. All right, so hang on to that. I'll hold those. If Thank I don't you. come back, just give my regards <laughs> to the family. It's different this time. You know, we've been through everything, giving you treatment. You know, I'm here for you, not for me. So I was just thinking maybe we could talk about this and I've got a bean for you. No, we can't even have a right. It's like this, is it? Come on. Oh, good step. That was a good step. Which one? Which one? Oh. oh, yes. There we go. Okay, now, this is a giving moment. Huh? Nothing nasty here. Little bean. Oh, let me just tie that little tablet a bit more. Little bean, what you might like. Huh? She's eating it. She is. Should we reward her with another one? A one without a tablet in it? <laughs> Right. Oh, she can't resist, can she? Okay, we've given her a good massage, a pedicure, and some pain relief, and she looks like she's running a lot more comfortably. But let's face it, the whole goal here is to keep this record breaker going, and you never know, one day she might just see her 21st birthday. All right, Naomi, thank you. Thank you, Chris. It's been a pleasure as always. Thank you on behalf of Lady. <laughs> no worries, we'll see you again soon, huh? Yeah, that's, that's good. Cheers. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.